Live from WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 7. It is 7 o'clock on your Friday morning. We begin with some breaking news from overnight at the state capitol where lawmakers spent the entire night discussing the most controversial topic of this special session, the police reform bill. The key issue right now is the term qualified immunity. Right now, police are protected from lawsuits while they're on the job, but critics say that same protection shields them from consequences. This is to hold bad actors accountable. And I hope and I pray that those of you in this chamber will think about the words that we all are sharing with you this evening. The current version of the bill would not hold officers personally liable, but it would weaken protections that towns receive through qualified immunity. Before taking up the police reform bill, lawmakers approved a plan to allow anyone to vote with an absentee ballot for the November election. They also passed a cap on insulin expenses. We'll continue to monitor this morning's debate. We'll bring you updates all morning long on the Channel 3 app. All right, weather-wise across Connecticut for our Friday, we're going to see an end to our most recent heat wave as temperatures today will likely only hit the mid and upper 80s for high. So our most recent one, the third one of the year, uh, six days in duration. But as soon as one ends, another one will likely start this weekend. More on that in just a moment. And if the month of July were to end right now, it would be the third hottest since records have been kept. Uh, first place happens to be last July with an average temperature of 78.2 degrees. Now this morning we've been tracking a few showers primarily in northeastern and eastern Connecticut. Those have since moved out of the state. We are currently dry and as we move forward in time today, there's a chance for an isolated shower, but many towns today will remain dry with an increasing amount of sunshine later this afternoon. Right now we have temperatures uh, basically between 70 and 75 for many communities across the state. Dew point values are still up there, but the wind you can see here has a northerly component to it. So as the day moves forward, some drier air filters and so the humidity will actually be decreasing by later this afternoon. So our I can view right now from Torrington showing more clouds than anything, but again, some intervals of sun. Similar scene coming in from Hartford as well as from New Haven, primarily cloudy over the Elm City and as well from southeastern Connecticut as we check in the uh, check in on the tugboats there from New London. So the front that moved through uh, overnight that brought us the round of thunderstorms, some of which were strong to severe late yesterday. Uh, those have all moved offshore. The front is going to be close enough to Connecticut that we can't rule out again an isolated shower this afternoon. But again, many towns remain dry. But being on the other side of this front, cooler air and drier air is going to be making its way southward. So that's today why temperatures will likely stay in the uh, the mid and upper 80s for high. So dew point values this morning close to 70. They'll be trending down or especially across interior Connecticut by mid to late afternoon. We could see dew points in the upper 50s and low 60s. So that will certainly feel nice and will set the stage for comfortably warm, but uh, some may argue hot weather for tomorrow. So future cast running through the rest of today. You can see some of that clearing getting underway as the morning progresses and then this afternoon may be a spotty shower, but otherwise dry and then overnight tonight will be clear to partly cloudy. Then for our Saturday, we'll see a uh, mostly sunny sky, dry weather for tomorrow as well as for Sunday. So this afternoon, mid and upper 80s should do it for highs inland, mid 80s along the 95 quarter. So certainly cooler, but still a little bit above average normal highs 85. Uh, with regard to the tropics, we're tracking Gonzalo. Tropical storm could become a hurricane as it heads toward the southern windward islands. Then in the Gulf of Mexico, clearly closer to home, we've got tropical storm Hannah heading toward the south coast of, of Texas. Could strengthen a little bit. Right now, tropical storm likely making landfall tonight into early tomorrow morning. So here on Connecticut on our seven day forecasting and a bright dry weekend. Morning lows will be in the mid and upper 60s, 90, 91 tomorrow, then 94 on Sunday. Over the second half of the weekend, the humidity starts to increase a bit, just downright hot and humid on Monday. Heat index values could get close to 100. A uh, chance for some storms late Tuesday with a cold front behind that, turning less humid and a little bit cooler, at least relatively speaking, for Wednesday and Thursday of next week. For shoreline highs this weekend, 87 tomorrow, then 88 for Sunday. Thank you, Mark. We turn now to the latest on the coronavirus in Connecticut. New numbers show 83 more people have tested positive for COVID-19 and four more patients have died over the last day. Also, hospitalizations in our state are up by nine. The U.S. now ha has now surpassed 4 million confirmed coronavirus cases. More than 144,000 Americans have died, and the CDC now projects the death toll could reach 175,000 by August 15th. The states driving the states driving the surge, I should say, are mostly in the south, like Florida, where President Trump has decided to partly cancel his party's national convention. As Channel 3's Laura Podesta shows us, the mayor of Miami has a new recommendation to protect the most vulnerable. President Trump is canceling the part of the Republican National Convention that was set to be held in Jacksonville next month. The timing for this event is not right, it's just not right with what's happened 
recently, the flare up in Florida. The state reported a record 173 new coronavirus deaths yesterday. And I'll still do a convention speech in a different form. This distillery south of Jacksonville was counting on the RNC for some much needed business. It would have meant a, a very nice, you know, boost in uh, in sales and income. Owner Philip McDaniel understands the risks are too high. I think in the in the bigger balance, it's the right call. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez says the largest spread of the virus is coming from within homes and suggested drastic measures. Particularly if they have a multi-generational household, wearing masks indoors, and also respecting social distance when they're at home. For the second day in a row, more than 1,000 Americans died from the coronavirus. Texas had 173 deaths. If all of you had the opportunity to walk into our hospitals, you would see warehouses of human beings, if you will, on stretchers and on ventilators. But in Arizona, new cases and hospitalizations are trending downward. There's no victory lap today. There's there's no celebration. Governor Doug Ducey indefinitely extended the state's closure of businesses like bars and gyms. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Starting today here in Connecticut, officials from the State Department of Public Health will be doing spot checks at the airport to make sure people are following the state's new quarantine rules. 31 states are currently on Connecticut's travel advisory list. Anyone coming here from those states needs to quarantine for 14 days and fill out an online form so the state can follow up. Travelers can, though, show proof of a negative test taken less than 72 hours before landing to avoid all that. Anyone who violates the new quarantine rules could be fined a thousand bucks. School districts must submit their reopening plans to the state by today. They have to send in three different versions, one for in-person instruction, one for remote learning, and one that's a mix of the two. The Hamden School District says it believes the hybrid model is the way they'll go. Elementary school age children will be in class four days a week with one day of distance learning. When it comes to middle and high schoolers, half the class will go into school for two days, while other students will learn at home. Then they'll switch for the second half of the week. Today, a reopen advisory committee will be reviewing guidelines concerning pool halls after some confusion about whether they should be open right now. Earlier this week, the State Liquor Commission told billiard, hall, billiard halls to close, but the Department of Economic and Community Development later apologized and said they were considered indoor recreation and should be allowed to reopen under Phase 2. It feels like we're just waiting for a ball to drop or we have no idea what's going on. The owner of Yale Billiard says business is down by close to 40 percent and the idea of closing again would be a major setback. The White House and congressional Republicans say they've reached an agreement on a phase four relief bill, but it may lack Democratic support if it doesn't include that extra unemployment benefit of $600 a week. Yesterday, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin proposed a new formula to give jobless workers 70 percent of their former wages, but some lawmakers say that's not enough. If you were making $300, you're not going to get $600 uh, this time, and that's fair. The unemployment insurance that we passed has kept more people out of poverty than just about anything else that's been passed. People need to feed their families. The White House hopes a final bill will be ready for a vote by the end of next week. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime you want them. Just turn to the Channel 3 app. Thanks for watching. I'm Eric Parker. Have a good day.